party. I stand out. Scan this. If you're in the other talk, I put all my talks in one GitHub so I didn't have to make multiple QR codes, even though I could use NiFi to generate the QR code. But that's dumb. But I could do it anyway if the Langstream people want to see that, maybe. I showed you who I am, where I am, and I do some stuff. Uh, these are the other two talks. One of them already happened. One of them's on Tuesday. So if anyone's still here, Tuesday at 11, I'm going to be doing an IoT one. I brought a Raspberry Pi 400. It has a thermal camera and some other garbage. I'm going to do that, show Minify in that one. This one will show you the new stuff, the recent stuff in NiFi and what's coming. Also, show some LLM because people wanted to see it. Also, LLM is greatly featured in the roadmap because LLM equals free money from people who will pay us to get engineers. So we just have to say that a lot and they'll give us new features. And it's true though, but I, I will show you, we have enough time. I don't have too much here unless there's a lot of questions. I'll show you an example of how I integrate LLM from a uh, hugging face and an LLM hosted at IBM Watson XAI, uh, which is their granite model, which is a little slim, but it's, it's pretty good for business data. I was kind of surprised because they produced it really fast, which is a little uh, suspect, but it's true. So some of the new features out there, and we'll go through these a little quicker because some of them, there's not much to them, but we have a reader now. We can read Excel natively. You don't have to do the full transformation or some kind of hacking. This reads this native, so I can run CalCite. Yeah, he's not, he's still here. We can run SQL queries with CalCite against Excel and convert that in part K in one step and do 50,000 of them at a time. Kind of cool. I could use glue for the Amazon people, use their schema registry. Remember we were saying schema registries? We added the glue one. I don't know. I don't recommend it, but you could do it. Um, for testing, you were saying integration testing. We add, we've had to generate one for a while we had to generate record so you could test records so that's kind of nice so you can generate records to test your data so you could do your integration testing you could also do the way i always do it download one record from something and just keep replaying it through the system it's kind of lame uh we can get stuff natively from asana if you like asana or if you just want to get their data you can query salesforce you don't have to do that 20 step process now of weird rest endpoints. That's kind of nice. And I could push stuff directly to Salesforce. Again, if you want to do that, you could do that. Supporting another Apache project, big in China, I could put to IoT DB record and query them as well. Those people are here, you could do that. These next couple are helpful for the LLM stuff. I can grab stuff from Google Drive from Box and Dropbox. That's kind of helpful. I don't know where I, I'm missing the list uh, Dropbox one, but that's in there somewhere too. So you can get from all the major places you have data and obviously still S3 and SFTP and FTP and file systems and virtual file systems, all that fun stuff. Uh, plus we've added improved encryption and this has all the government encryption ones in there. And obviously with NiFi, everything is extensible. So you want to add more, very easy to add that to the system. You don't have to, you can put it up as a improvement if it's your own encryption library, which my uh, friends in Cupertino have, you can create your own and run it just for yourself. You don't have to commit it back. It'd be nice if you did, but you don't have to. All these things are extensible. Uh, this one comes up a lot because some people like schemas and we were talking about schema registries. Before we had a process to grab a schema, it was a little kludgy and we still have built into all the record processors. Whenever you look at data and derive a schema, there's an option in the controls to say, put that schema in an attribute for me and then you could extract it out there but some people thought that was too much work. So we made a processor that looks at your data, gives you a schema and lets you push it somewhere. 
So you could push that to Confluent or the Hortonworks one or the NIFI one or whatever schema. If someone comes up with an Apache schema registry, please let us know. Please do it. There's definitely support for that. This one, I don't think this is necessary. You could do it other ways, but it's very helpful. You have a record and the data is coming through and someone doesn't like one of the fields. Maybe you've got to redact it. Instead of doing something funky like writing SQL, this will pull that field out of your data and it'll be gone. That's kind of nice. There are already ways to do masking and I can do SQL queries to do this, but in one step, pulled all that out of your record. Uh, I forget what this one is. Uh, this is some kind of uh, some kind of encryption thing. This one is a weird one. This one's only more relevant now, the trigger Hive Metastore event, because Hive Metastore has been updated to work with Iceberg, and now it can be a lot slimmer, because Iceberg doesn't store all the metadata in Hive Metastore. Stores it mostly in files along with its parquet files. So this is very slim. So when something changes, you could trigger things, update Iceberg and other stuff. Pretty good. If you've seen Record Path, Record Path is our agnostic language for talking to different file formats. So I could, this is the Record Path, the equivalent of JSON Path, but for every kind of file. So I could use this scripting language to describe and pull apart Avro files, Parquet files, Excel now. Uh, this means the language now expanded to have a count function. So you can pull apart part of data into a count. Kind of cool. <laughs> we added some to call ML processors and I have some articles coming out on this soon. It is not hard to call these, but now we have a processor and a processor that checks it. So what happens is these are ML jobs within Amazon. You trigger them by passing in credentials and like some JSON and it will run it. And, but it's a job, they're not running right away. So people are like, how do you run a batch thing? Well, these are Amazon batch. We run it and then we have a processor that checks it. So what we do is we check it and I can put a pause on it, then it can recheck it and just wait and check, wait and check. Not the most beautiful thing for streaming, but if you're waiting for the results of these, you got to do it. And we've got it for transcribing from a video or, or uh, audio file, translating from one text to another language. Uh, Poly takes your text and turns it into an MP3 or other file format to talk. And text extract takes, uh, does uh, extraction of faxes and other things. So you could pull out text from poorly written documents. Uh, not too hard to do that. There are some things that are getting rid of in the next version. And you kept bringing up XML, XML. Yes, everyone complained about XML. So now that we've been far enough along, NIFI 2 will permanently remove all XML. The XML templates, the flow XML, those are permanently gone. Everything now is JSON until someone complains and then NIFI 3, we put it in YAML. Uh, we get rid of the old Kafka. No more Kafka 1 or 2 component. Get rid of Ambari because Ambari hasn't been used in a long time. We're dropping the ECMA script engine and the Luau and Ruby ones, because no one used it. And they're heavyweight to call from Java, and they're kind of kludgy. Again, got rid of them. Variables have been replaced with parameters. Var variables were kind of hacky. Didn't really work. I'll show you parameters are much nicer. Parameters are completely isolated. So when I write code, I can write the code, put it in version control, pull it out automatically, apply parameters to it for every field you want if you if you really needed to have them ready to go put that in a container to run and just have it run and what's nice is there's multiple ways to run nifi now now there's the ui that i'm using here there is stateless nifi which can run in aws lambda or any of those kind of uh function as a service engines can run command line as a job. 
can run headless as Minify, and I can automatically deploy that with a JVM somewhere, whether in a container, in a pod, VM, wherever. So we got a couple options. And to make it easier, I could have NiFi act as my engine to run those. So this execute stateless means I can now run NiFi in its own JVM as a stateless function, run it and have it complete. The use case for this one is read from Kafka, do some junk, and then push it to another Kafka topic. And if it fails, rolls back, doesn't mess up my offsets. That comes up for people like that. That is a nice transactional kind of job. Obviously, that's not really streaming, though. If I'm doing these multi-step transactions, you get in that debate, but you can do it. But you could do it right through the UI now. So I could right-click a module group and go run this as stateless. Runs in a separate VM, doesn't mess up anything else, does what it does, and brings you the results back. Kind of cool. If from people doing NiFi. Pretty nice. And also, that could be a way to run those Python isolated or anything else isolated. And eventually, we could have that so we could run that somewhere else, like in a random container. I mean, we could do that now with NiFi networking. I could call another NiFi cluster and have it run it there. And I could spin up, have NiFi spin up a cluster somewhere, run the process, and then shut it down. We have done that. Um, again, everything's JSON. Records everywhere. Oh, this is a very important video. NiFi out yet? No. You can download the beta if you want, but it, it is it's not out yet. Uh, but what's coming, the important one, with everyone talking LM and AI, we can run Python, run it smart, run it so it's isolated and don't mess up other people's stuff. Right now, we execute it. It could potentially step on stuff or we have to use Jython. And if you've tried to use Jython, uh, it's not great. Parameters are first class everywhere. You got to use them because you set it up and then people can reuse your code. You download it, people send in the parameters and they can run it just like that. We're doing at least JDK 17. There is a debate in the community, 21 or even 22 is coming quick. 21 is very possible because this is not FI2, it's a separate branch. We'll keep the lower JDKs on the one branch. That may happen. They've already seen some really good performance uh, reasons for doing that. We're adding a rules engine to help you with the de development. And there'll be different ways you could plug that in. The open source will write some. Some companies will write some. And what's nice is they allow plug-in of LLM and other AI and ML models into that besides just real basic rules engine. So this will be, I get into the UI and I could start with a prompt and say, I want to grab data from DB2 and push it into Iceberg and AWS. And it'll start you along the path of how you should do that or give you an immediate template. There's new uh, templates that we've come up with that have a full flow ready to go with parameters and it drops it on the canvas and gives you a wizard. You fill in the parameters, press how you want to deploy it and deploy it on Kubernetes at the size you want with auto scaling. Kind of nice. Uh, we said that run process is stateless and for you, your flow is not flow XML anymore. And it, you could kind of read a NiFi source code, which hopefully will make things easier for uh, LLM. I want to thank Pierre. He gave me a couple of slides. He is a PMC member and very helpful guy. Again, this is a major one is being able to run Python. So what happens is you write your Python. I can have access to all the NiFi stuff within there. And then when I'm done deploying it, it looks like a regular NiFi component has all the features of NiFi components with the queuing, multi, automatically deployed on multiple clusters. We handle all the PIP stuff for you and encapsulate that all safely 
And as people have seen with NARS, we're pretty good at isolating stuff out there. I don't know how they figured that out, but they did. NIFI is doing pretty well. Last four years, we've increased the number of committers. We moved up versions really fast. And the Docker people are going nuts. I think that's people doing automated testing, but that's still, that's pretty cool. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of deployment options from the C++ version, which is not quite up to spec because it takes us longer to rewrite things in C++. Minify Java, it is in the main branch of NiFi. We just turn the UI off. So it makes it smaller and we give you less of the components to start with, but you can add any of these NARs pretty easily to a deployment as you need them. NiFi registry, to do version control, and we're going to be adding features to track your custom code. So you write custom Python or custom Java, and it'll be wrapped up and anyone can deploy it, whether you're on one node, a hundred nodes, any platform, and we'll have a public uh, registry out there so people can share them and they can be vetted ones. We mentioned the stateless one. There's a couple of corporate uh, deployment options as well, including the ability to run it through Kafka Connect, which is pretty interesting. And that works kind of nice. Uh, and we mentioned the functions so we could run it on Lambda. Lots of different options there. Uh, as uh, an example, we've already had uh, someone write uh, integration with LLM. This is one way to do it. Uh, George did this and it was pretty cool. He connected to his Evernote and was able to run this through uh, NiFi 2, colon the Python APIs for Langchain and OpenAI. I'm definitely going to talk to the Langstream guys because I would love to be able to do this all in Java and been able to integrate. I don't know if I'll integrate through Java or through WebSockets or through Kafka or Pulsar. We'll have to uh, mix and match maybe. So that looks really cool. But yeah, that was pretty easy to do. I'm going to show you some demo because we got hopefully a bunch of time here i think we got some time right lots of time yeah i didn't want to just show slides no one likes it. unless you come to the uh if you come to the one on uh minify tuesday there's a lot of cat pictures so that one's a little nicer okay so the first thing i want to show you just some regular nine five features and show you why this is interesting so this is just regular stuff. And there's a lot of calls. I, someone was saying, why don't you write one processor to do a whole bunch of stuff? So maybe we'll do that in Python. Yeah. Just to make it slower. <laughs> I, I say, why don't we integrate Rust? Because someone's going to ask for Rust and Go. But So this one, I'm just grabbing all the US travel advisories for, for uh, travel. Uh, those are our RSS feed. I put them into Kafka because why not? This is the thing you'll only see in NiFi, a processor to slow down NiFi because some downstream systems don't want things too fast or they want them regulated. So this is turning real time into acceptable to people time or acceptable to different processes or for this one to be able to watch it. Uh, because I'm going to send this data to LLM, and I found out if I send them 10,000 messages a second, I get a call from IBM or Hugging Face, and they threaten to do stuff. So you can't do this. So I put that stuff into Kafka because that's a great way to distribute data, even though this is running on the same machine here, which is a little silly. So we should be getting all this data here unless my... Uh, IP address changed, which it might have changed. Hopefully it didn't change. Oh, probably have to start it. Again, the value of NIFI is I never lose my data, but if I'm dumb and stop something, I got to restart it. I can restart everything in NIFI remotely or through REST or through the SDK, which you could be a full talk. There's a interactive SDK I could type through and see everything change things. It's very good for DevOps if I need to grab something from version control, apply parameters, and then execute it, which I can execute it by launching it in a Docker container as a stateless image and 
compose that on the fly. That seems a little heavyweight, but I could do that. So let's make sure that we actually got the uh, stuff into Kafka. And so that the Kafka people will give me a dollar for mentioning Kafka. They've got a lot of money. Okay. Travel. Did we get travel data? Three megs. What's the date? Sunday. Wow. We're doing a talk on Sunday. But people showed up, so I'm very happy. Okay. So we got the data. So here it is. Data starting to show up. I've got it stopped here. So what I'm going to do is take the data. And originally I had to chunk it up and break it up to make it different. So that's why I put that SQL query in there. But it turns out I didn't need to do that. So I once the input is ready, I have it here to call my LLM. And what does that data look like? This is the very fun code I have to use to be able to log into Watson X plus a random token that I have to generate with some weird process. But uh, we do that. We get uh, a token back from that process if, uh, if they're actually running today. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, they're running. Okay, so then what I do next is I got that token, so they let me logged in. Thank you. That's really great. So I'm going to run this model, which is cool as I could change models on the fly. Same with Hugging Face, same with Cloudera ML, same with uh, IBM Watson and XAI, and probably a bunch of others. Hopefully someone will create an Apache project to run LLM models. But again, no one has 40 GPUs lying around. So there's a couple of parameters I send here, plus the that code. The input is that text from the travel advisory from the US government. So I pulled it down, cleaned it up because you found out you can only send a certain size data. You shouldn't have HTML in there. There's a lot of that stuff I filtered out already with NiFi. So we get it, we put it in a format that they like. We send it, we query it, we get the data back. And now we've got the LLM content and I push it to another Kafka topic because why not? I could send it anywhere. I could put it in a data store. I could put it uh, wherever it happens to be. Uh, I could probably push it to Slack. I know people like to see stuff in Slack. So I put it over here, put it in Slack. So it should be showing up in my Slack channel. If you have a corporate Slack, they will never let you do this. But uh, I this is my own Slack group, so I could put it in there. So what did we get? We still got the vehicle positions. Did we get the new one yet? Let's make sure we send out the uh, another Slack. Do you have your previous talk planned? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, just run everything on the laptop. It's fine. Well, it says it sent it. Well, I'll just go into data providence, go to the content replay. So I just re-ran it. Obviously, if you wanted to uh, exactly once, that's not going to go well because I just put it in there twice. Oh, uh, here. Now, oh, here it is. There's the granite. So I sent in this prompt and, along with a, a hint, which is what they ask you to do when you're using one of the prompt libraries. So I went into prompt library and said, how do I make it give me a summary? Because it's, it's not as intuitive as you would hope. So I put the prompt in there with the that summary that came off of that travel feed, but it could be any data. I could pull it social media. I can pull it from documents, whatever makes sense. And then I get the response back. Not a great summary, but I guess that's good. They give you different ones, you know, and somehow, yeah, Halifax one is still running somewhere. I should probably stop that, but the, that's a, we'll do that later. But in here, I'm also sending it to uh, to Kafka because where else? You, oh, yeah, that's going big. That's not good. Yeah, but it's uh, pu we push it to Kafka as well, and we push it into Slack. But uh, just to show you some LLM and some of the slightly newer features, but I've got all the new processors on a single screen like you're going to do at home to show you some of the new features here. So there's the Excel reader. You go into the Excel reader and 
it's the same format as all the other record ones. You know, how am I getting my schema? I'm curious how that's going to come out of Excel because people put garbage in there. So we'll see if it works, but I don't know. I I would check your Excels before you try this because you're probably going to get a lot of sparse data as they try to come up with that or make enforce an Excel format somewhere. I guess if you could do that, you wouldn't need an iFi or anything. Probably use a real database for the data and not put it all in Excel or Google Sheets. We can pull in Google Sheets too. So we do that. And here you could skip things, which sheets. So kind of useful for uh, for reading Excel. And again, once I read in Excel, convert it into all the different formats and I can write my queries here. So if I want only a couple of the fields from Excel, and then I push it into Google Sheets. I mean, this doesn't sound like stuff that are exciting, but why write that by hand? You're gonna write all that code by hand. So if I want to connect to Asana, you gotta connect to Asana client and that's lots of fun for you. Uh, as you imagine, the processors to do Google Drive and the other ones work the same way anything works within NiFi. There's a list one connects to that fetches it. So the list only brings back the names. So if you're only interested in the names, you don't have to do the fetch part. The fetch part is the one that's going to actually retrieve that file. So you don't have to do the list. If you knew that ID, you could just send it right in there. And it's the same for S3, the same for Box, the same for all of them. And then if I wanted to put my data into a Google Drive, which if it's smaller data or maybe the result of LLM, maybe as our way to write our book, We'll steal the documentation from somewhere, push it through LLM to make it slightly wrong. And then I'll bring it in, convert it to PDF, which I can do with PDF Fox or Tika, and then push it into a Google Drive. And within a couple of hours, NiFi just wrote me a plagiarized LLM book, which I probably could get signed for. And it's not going to take me 18 months to write that. I don't know it'll be any good, but. It's better than some of the books I've seen out there that people don't know what to do. Uh, what else we got here? Let's see what this verified content Mac is. Message authentication code algorithm. That seems really complex. So that's pretty cool. So you might want to use that if you know what those things are. It's probably, probably well, NiFi has the built-in documentation. Calculates a message authentication code. Does anyone know what a message authentication code is? Oh, oh, my buddy to back. It's all verifying that the company thing that you got needs to have one of the things that has the whole thing, right? Oh, that's cool then. So if you've ever downloaded anything from a company, it comes with uh, ASP. Think about that when you say not. You're verifying that the content is what you expect. So that's useful. Right? Very cool. <laughs> We add features and I don't know who asked for them. Somebody asked for them. I've never met that person, but they must be important or they wrote it themselves. So that's really cool. Uh, this is the one, takes the record in, takes the record out. You add the field you want to remove. Kind of cool. I don't know if I need a full step for that. I could have done that with the uh, query one, but that's pretty cool. We mentioned record path. If you've done spring before, it's kind of, a similar idea of a mini language embedded in there. This one is so you can do some kind of interesting stuff with these records. Because we originally had that for JSON. Because uh, JSON has a JSON path that lets you use path language, which is slightly easier than regex to change things. Like change things from a tree to flatter or remove parts or move them around or duplicate things. It could do a lot. It's a little weird. But we added it for record path, so we could do that with now Excel or any new record format that we write, the community writes, or anybody writes, can now take advantage of this to have a way to auto script the part pieces there and do it very quickly. The transformers are fast. And the new thing we mentioned was a function here. So if you wanted to, if there was a tree of things underneath an array under JSON, you could count how many elements are there and maybe roll it up to an aggregate to say, yeah, you've got 400 sub records. What do you want to do? Great way to process arrays, 
whether they're in Avro, JSON, XML. I'm not sure how those would work in formats that don't really have much to do there. But it's interesting when you use record path, I could do things like replace data values in a row in 50,000 rows as they go by with a value of an attribute. So attributes are things I could get from metadata. Or like for me, I want to roll something up and I want to take the prompt that I used to get that result back. When I call Watson or I call Hugging Face, they throw away all that and they just give me the results of the rest call. So I put that prompt in an attribute. And then when I'm done, I put it back into the row. Now I have a row with fields I want combining multiple things. It's not a join, but it's a nice way to augment and enrich data as it's going through a pipeline. And this lets you move that stuff around. Like you might have really weird data. It also lets you do things like query things, change everything that has... Uh, the same format, like there may be multiple cities under one address, roll them up. It's kind of cool. I don't know anyone who knows it super well other than uh, Pierre, but if you want to learn it, you probably can. Execute stateless, again, to be able to write stateless NiFi flows, and you could do it dynamically. So NiFi, we talked about this dumb idea. You guys, you got to come to lunch. We should have lunch sessions. So the dumb idea is write all your code stored in a database. They used to do that. It was a bad idea, but we could do that now. So I can write code dynamically since it's stored in JSON and save that into a file, dynamically point to it here and execute that. Is that a good idea for our security friends? No, that I could dynamically write code and execute it wherever I want. This can all be secured. And NiFi has a very strong security system down to being able to lock and remove any processor. Every processor is its own NAR file, which I pointed out when he had those, that keeps them all isolated in their own environment. And all of those can be removed completely from your server. So you can run NiFi and instead of having these 400 different controls up here, 428, you could have seven. Like you can remove them from the server and you can't get them. Or or you could securely lock them out from people you know are going to cause problems. But I could tell you if you remove all those extra processors, things run faster and there's less disk install. A full NiFi install with the 428 is the is a medium size install. There are hundreds of other processors. Right now, the full NiFi build in slim mode is over a gig. You could easily go out to gigs because there's so many different processors. And some of them use Tika, some use OpenNLP. Like these are mine. And I've written one using Stanford Core NLP. And these are very easy to add your own. Uh, we're adding, like I mentioned, that public registry where you could put them uh, wherever. Uh, oh, and then who's got, here's your processor. See, I'm putting it here. So that's how we write Pulsar. Anyone can write it. And then uh, Dave will support it for you. I think we're getting late. People want to do questions. Otherwise, I'll randomly go through boxes here. Yeah, we've got at least five minutes for questions. So. Uh, and if you don't uh, ask all your questions now, uh, why don't you end during lunch? Yeah, lunch is the time. Yeah. Okay. So, you want the SVP? Watson? Yes. And it is really easy. You could also start from Maven. There's a Maven archetype that fills in everything and actually makes a running processor. And you just write one class, maybe load one library call that from the code, which looks a lot like the poor man spring, like a dumbed down version of spring, like one method. And then you have a processor, then it's a NAR file that goes into uh, a directory where these NARs are. A NAR is just a smart version of a jar that's compiled so it doesn't have nonsense in it to break other people's stuff. 
And that's all you need to do. In the next version, you'll be able to do that in Python. Right now, it's got to be Java. There are people who've done it in Scala and in Groovy and other JVM languages. It's It works, but I, because of the way we wrap up the stuff in the NAR, I'm not certain it, it's safe outside of the boundaries. Because yeah. some of those languages do some funky stuff. In theory, you'd be fine. I know people have done Scala. Well, there's two options. If I put it in the lib and restart the server, it's in the main area. But we have a dynamic area for when you're testing. You can point it there. In the next version, there will be a public NiFi registry where you'll be able to look to and say, oh, I want this registry. And it'll copy it to your cluster, to all your machines and put it in an available area. We'll, and in Kubernetes, it would just restart things on demand. The interesting thing is if I use 9.5 version control, when I deploy a flow, I can dynamically stop it as it's running, keep it running. Like you have a running flow, add processors and change the flow version while it's running and it won't interrupt you. It'll check and see if it's gonna have a breaking change, like removing stuff. But if you're adding steps, it will pause right where it is, add the new stuff in there, and then continue running while deploying, which is, I'm not sure how that works, but it does. Yes. If we have the nice user interface, yeah. Um, it's very similar. I mean, Camel's been around for a very long time, though. So Camel has a lot of a lot of processors and features. To me, Camel really works well for you know application integration. Like, you know, you want to integrate, you're writing a Java app and you want to in integrate a bunch of things and then deploy it. NiFi is more dynamic and we tend to work more with data oriented things, streaming only. We don't want to run one thing. We don't want to do a batch unless someone really makes us like those AWS processors, which make me loop to uh, go through them, which is very painful to me to watch that. I could show you that and it's, it makes me very sad. I don't have that problem with hugging face. For the looping, is there any way that you could get S3 events to come to you? Yes. I could so just wait for them. I don't okay. need to to sit and wait because it's done. I sent the job there. I could wait for an AWS event. AWS will also push to SNS or S3. I can subscribe to any Amazon stuff and get it that way. But it, but if you're really concerned, like I said, I, I don't want to continue my pipeline to I get it. I mean, and I also wanted to show that second processor. So I start it. And then I get the status. And then if it's, then I check it. I do a little pause, try it again. You don't have to do that. You could just start it and then have another flow somewhere else that's waiting for an S3 message. Or there's a bunch of different triggers they have. Or I could on demand go take a look at the status. Uh, it depends on the processor. Depends on some of the ML jobs are so fast and it's like why wait for that like some of these is literally two seconds but some of them like the transcribe one took 30 minutes so that's probably i i should just wait for an s3 event or for some other event to come in